can go on ahead with the next uh, session uh, on the next session session 3 will be on stroke prevention uh, i would like to invite the moderators first i would like to invite dr jairaj pandian sir dr jairaj pandian sir is the principal uh, dean and professor of neurology from uh, cmc ludhiana he is the vice president of the world stroke organization he is the president of the isa chair and uh, asian stroke advisory panel he is the president of the asia pacific stroke conference in chennai to be held in chennai 2021 i would also like to invite dr devishish choudhury he is the director professor and head department of neurology from gb pant institute of uh, postgraduate medical research and education and research new delhi sir i would like to request you uh, to kindly take over the dais thank you yeah, uh, thank you very much um i'm not sure dr dibashish is joined or yeah yeah ah yes yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. good morning good morning good morning, morning yeah so you yeah. go ahead for the yeah, yeah. okay please. yeah thank you uh, uh, i think we are moving on to an important session on uh, stroke prevention uh, we all know that uh, more than 80% of the uh, stroke can be prevented uh, by you know if we can look target about 10 risk factors Uh, from the famous interstroke uh, study, case control study, and the Inspire and, uh, uh, and uh, stroke prevention, we can do at uh, different levels. And uh, uh, Dr. Padma is going to uh, look at the use of double antiplatelet um, in stroke prevention you know, when and what to uh, uh, what to use. And we all know Dr. Padma; she doesn't need a, an introduction, but she's a great friend of uh, mine and. Uh, We have worked together in many uh, projects in stroke and also in stroke advocacy in our country. And uh, over to Dr. Padma. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, coming from you and uh, getting the introduction from you means a lot. So there we are. So let let's talk about when and how to use these dual antiplatelets in stroke prevention. And so that is Moses. Uh, he is being given the two tablets of aspirin from the heaven. So that's where we are. You see, aspirin still remains the gold standard with which every other antiplatelet therapy is being, you know, uh, compared and contrasted with. It's only very recently that we have head-on trials with dual antiplatelets, and there are several ongoing. But otherwise, this is where it is. The Moses is given as aspirin. So let's look at two essential premises on which the concept of a dual antiplatelet therapy stands. one what is the recurrence so this actually indicates a stroke prone state okay so we have 10 to 20% recurrence happening in the first 3 months in fact most of them happening in the first 14 days and in fact the largest depending upon the stroke subtype in the first 48 hours so that defines the stroke prone state wherein it seems the maximum number is when the things are pretty hot right the second is we have all these antiplatelets which are in the spectrum and each one of them has their own mechanism of action so we need to find some synergism there's nothing which is acting 100% so can we combine so that we can have a kind of a double action which would be more synergistic so is two better than one and that is uh, driven home by this cartoon which says that you know whether we using aspirin which is a cox1 inhibitor and you have this thrombox and a2 inhibitors and you have platelet aggregants problems the p2 y12 uh, you know inhibitors which are all this grails which are there out here so you have different mechanisms of action and and this is a, a slide which a sort of compares the four of these drugs which are in contention and which are being used the aspirin clopidogrel celastazole and ticagrelor okay to us this is a new kid on the block but not for the cardiologists so this will actually compare even the different regimes shweta i think somebody needs to mute somebody needs to mute please someone is on please look into that so the key questions therefore are quintessentially should aspirin still be the most valued antiplatelet agent then what is the optimal dosage or combos better are the newer kits much superior to aspirin and what about antiplatelets in special situations and this probably i won't have time to talk about much but let's look at the others see these the the next two slides is something which i always put up and i do feel, believe that although these are relatively pretty old slides from old that is the results of capri and esps2 that's more than a decade old 
but it really drives home some very important points that you know one glove fit all approach will never work okay so guideline again is a guideline which will just probably give you the direction but each individual is unique so you have all these risk factors age wise you can divide hypertension diabetes your cardiac peripheral artery disease and who smokes like a chimney and who has other issues now not everybody is everything out here right so you can have a 75 year old who is hypertensive or a 60 year old who is hypertensive diabetic had a cardiac disease peripheral artery disease and is a smoker so when you calculating the points which will up the risk of a recurrence they are all of them and this is the essence risk score profile and you look at the charting when the risk is very less a single antiplatelet will do just fine as good as an a double antiplatelet but when the risk is very high and you put them on a single antiplatelet this is a kind of a recurrence rate it is way too high the double antiplatelets are much better in reducing the risk so you will have to individualize so the combos that we may be uh, discussing uh, clopidogrel aspirin which is the most famous combo aspirin dabramol has come does stay but you know it's not really being used so much at least in this part of the world aspirin celastazole great big use in the far east and probably is would have some say in coming future aspirin ticagrel after the famous thales trial and the triple therapy sort of uh, well it didn't have much uh, takers at this point of time but, and then you have the combos of anticoagulant the single antiplatelet versus aspirin alone so let's look at the famous indications for a dual antiplatelet therapy one is of course after tis and minor strokes one is the symptomatic intracranial atherosclerosis and in atrial fibrillation so in ti and minor strokes we have trials which looked at duat versus monotherapy the triple versus duat and also the more potent agents in ticagrelor what's the evidence i think it is a chance trial which again I, i i do say that there are certain trials in history which are like the, fa- the you know what we say as the the face of cleopatra you know they say that her face launched a thousand ships in that famous war so we have this big big trials which launch a hundred trials subsequently like we have the nins trial landmark and for this it's been the chance trial the chinese trial and we'll come to this a little later but even before that historically the double antiplatelets were tried out in match and match was actually commissioned as a win win trial by then you had aspirin and dipodamol and you also had clopidogrel being superior to aspirin in when you, when the 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 what you call as the the inclusion criteria was more of coronary artery disease rather or rather than the patients with stroke so they felt that aspirin clopidogrel versus clopidogrel should be even better but it didn't turn out that way because the patients were taken within 3 months the qualifying event had to be a stroke not the coronary artery disease and then you looked at all the famous outcome measures which are the same two groups clopidogrel placebo clopidogrel aspirin follow up for 18 months and this was largely a negative trial because it did not lead to better benefit and there were more hemorrhages so what went wrong here the qualifying event was great but it was within 3 months it was recent but not really within the 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 point of you know the stroke rate the second is you continuing this combination for a good period of more than a year so maybe that was a thing the second was sps3 which even more a disastrous trial because the stroke prevention st- uh, you know the study you your entry point is a lacoon so you classically take the small little lacoons you give them this combination again the you know you say recent but it is not in the stroke prone state and then you continue for a long long time no wonder it was a disaster now charisma is again uh, well it was uh, there were a significant who were randomized within 30 days but more often not there were more people enrolled after 30 days okay so even if there were high risk patients with history of tia and stroke this also was uh, not hugely uh, you know take home in the sense that it was not very significant so chance changed it because here you randomized within 24 hours so bang in the stroke prone state where the iron is really hot you have to hit it hard there 
and then you divided them into two groups and you only gave them for 21 days and followed up the period uh, follow up period was 9 days 90 days so here it was significantly different in the, that the combined group had a better reduction of stroke recurrence versus the 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 single agent and uh, with no major bleeds happening in both the groups there were caveats though because in the subgroup analysis where there was cyp c2 the cyp2 c19 loss of function function allele were in a subgroup with a pretty big number and in them the clopidogrel didn't really act so the limitations were that this belong largely to one racial population so would it be generalized to all races second that it this loss of allele was also more in asians icad is more in asians so because of this heterogeneous etiology and second is the loading dose was 300 mg instead of 600 mg for clopidogrel hemorrhage was not significant so then with this caveats in chern trial the point trial was taken up so this was a largely a western trial and the here the entry point was even early it was within 12 hours of stroke clopidogrel was a uh, uh, in a at a bigger dosage of 600 mg and this was also carried out for a period of the the you know follow up was period of 90 days but the com combination was given for a larger period so this is the difference between the chance and the point trial that intervention here within 24 hours this within 12 hours the loading dose of clopidogrel was 300 in chance and 600 in point trial and you continued the duration the intervention the combination was for 90 days this is for the first 21 days so there were more bleeds in point trial but this was also an early trial it this was also a positive trial and then there was a meta analysis this got published in the year 2013 chance faster and early trials and the over a 9000 patients all randomized within 72 hours it seemed there was non significant bleeding and the combos definitely decrease the recurrence of stroke and composite vascular events and death okay so that this is the the slide i'm going to have these slides there on the youtube for uh, anyone who would want to use this okay so i will not be going into detail here so the pool risk ratios and 95% confidence intervals as regards whether it is a recurrence whether it is you know a major bleeding whether it is in terms of you know the uh, and, and this was faster chance point and thales thales is essentially a combination of aspirin and ticagrelor you know this is this as i said before this is brillanta which is used by cardiologists right left and center but for us for stroke people it's only after thales that this has come into view now this was asked on the first day of our stroke uh, meeting also by one of the the international speakers so this again largely said that the combination was much much better all right so the conclusions as far as the tias are concerned is that duat with aspirin clopidogrel or aspirin ticagrelor given within 24 hours of virus tias or the non cardioembolic mild to moderate stroke effectively reduces risk of recurrence of stroke and these are major cardiac events compared to aspirin monotherapy there is definitely high risk of bleeding which is a no brainer but this didn't lead to major disability or death but remember the decision again you have to individualize based on the individuals bleeding and thrombotic risk profile and the dosing there's no head to head comparison as such but clopidogrel loading dose 300 followed by 75 and aspirin loading dose between 75 to 350 now in symptomatic icad and this is uh, essentially the evidence came from sampros clair caris now clair caris are those little little trials wherein the microembolic signals were taken as biomarkers of an unstable plaque out there and in in the in the combo you had far less microembolic signals but the sampras trial was great in the sense this pitted against the best medical management or the available aggressive medical management where there is a real like you know there was a one to one interaction of telling them don't smoke keep your ldl under control your cholesterol and keep your blood pressure under control and that kind of a thing in a high dose of statin that wherein a subgroup had actually had even a you know in both arms aspirin and clopidogrel for 90 days okay 
and this was fitted against the wingspan system of uh, intervention and uh, there was a famous editorial after the sampras trial because this was a negative trial for the intervention they said unless and until we have safe landing procedures don't get into stenting of icat so we we are only looking at the in your face trial we are not looking at those guys who would continue to recur while being on aggressive medical management and now we have safer and more you know uh, uh, very intricate and delicate uh, stents which are available to be deployed intracranially so icat stenting is again on board and that is there but then there are definite criteria wherein you go and intervene there okay so the best medical management seem to be superior to pe- the the you know person in the trans the angioplasty for icat however this was the take home message with sample trial i'm not going to deal with the stenting part what i'm trying to tell you is the aggressive medical management had involved combination of antiplatelets there for a good period of 3 months okay that seemed to be there in icat patients Keras and Claire, as I said before, were looking into microembolic sickness. So ESP is two, and Esprit were again those age-old trials at the at the historical time of match where aspirin and diphenol stayed, and this combination did turn out to be better than a single antiplatelet, whether it is aspirin or diphenol. So in this study, that and at that time there was also placebo, you know, allowed. So this combination therefore came into being. so also was esprit and then subsequently process was launched and again as a win win trial because they pitted aspirin diprodamol against clopidogrel this did not turn out to be good okay now coming now to the the new drug celastazol celastazol essentially is a drug of the forest probably it is good because it has much less hemorrhage risk as compared to aspirin is equal to aspirin efficacy proven in csp is 2 and there's a meta analysis of celastazol of four trials which is say which does say that the there are decreased hemorrhagic events in fact very good safety profile as compared to aspirin so this started started coming on board already approved for peripheral artery disease that you maybe you can try this when people continue to bleed on aspirin and also on topical they don't tolerate these two but then the recommendation of juvat with aspirin and celastazol is coming up in a big big way you have csps.com which is a multi center open label randomized controlled trials in japan and high risk non cardiomyopathic ischemic stroke randomly assigned to receive monotherapy or a celastazol twice daily 100 mg with aspirin or clopidogrel okay so this is a combo of celastazol aspirin celastazol clopidogrel and uh, they and this is essentially an an uh, uh, which is which is uh, um did show that there's a reduced incidence of ischemic stroke recurrence and a similar risk of severe or life threatening bleeding when you compare this to you know aspirin or clopidogrel the combination of celastazol with aspirin or clopidogrel was pretty good so trials using celastazol conducted in asia you have so many of them so many of them only thing is they're all in asia they haven't really uh, found a way into the west and uh, in fact there's a recent editorial which says that it's high time now the west woke up and taken credence of what is happening and it is good that celastazol should come into the armamentarium of stroke prevention the last of it is ticagrelor which is well it is supposedly much much superior to aspirin whenever there's something which is superior it also ups the risk of a bleed uh well the plateau trial was essentially in acute coronary syndrome socrates was parent you you did look at minor stroke and high risk tia but then this was a negative trial because this was a mixed bag out there so the taking a cue from the socrates results thales was launched wherein you took this extremely high risk atherosclerotic disease here the the abcd uh, you know should be 6 and above really high risk or with a severe atherosclerotic disease and thales turned out to be although there are differences between thales and socrates thales is probably the largest trial the uh, uh, 13000 nearly 14000 were planned 11000 patients have been the results have been just published which was again a positive trial tardes was negative the triple drugs didn't work the last part in the last, just one minute i want to cover atrial fibrillation 
active w and active a now this was with warfarin and this was with aspirin now there are situations where you just can't give oral anticoagulants okay you can't anticoagulate then what do you do now in that these two trials have shown that when you pit anticoagulation against antiplatelets clearly it's anticoagulation antiplatelets don't come there but when you can't anticoagulate please at least give an antiplatelet and in that the combo the anti the dual antiplatelet is much better than a single antiplatelet and this is something which i was talking about even yesterday so when you have a non valvular af okay placebo antiplatelet 22% reduction you have single antiplatelet double antiplatelet your further reduction double antiplatelet versus an oral anticoagulant like vka really almost 70% reduction in the recurrence of a uh, ischemic event and when you're pitting the vka versus a novak with this dabigatran rivaroxaban or epixaban you do have with a bigger dose of dabigatran even further reduction okay which is not inferior here with the rivaroxaban or slightly better with epixaban so that's how it is so the double antiplatelets have a role even in atrial fibrillation when you can't anticoagulate okay the risk and duration of duat largely used for short term so it's only in active a where it is used for primary or secondary prevention of af that the duat continues for a long long time and in icad you're going to give it for a 3 months time this is a beautiful meta analysis and you know take home kind of messages by dr prasad this was this was published in bmj 2018 and this also tells you the same thing uh, i'm skipping this because there's no time here now these are the recommendations which are there so it's indicated for 90 days in patients with severe icad indicated for lifelong in patients with af who are unable to take oral anticoagulants and 21 days after a minor event there are a lot of unexplored questions boys and girls because we don't know duat in patients with large infarct volumes high nihss and low risk tis what do you do with them lacuns well the sps3 was negative what about in extracranial large artery disease and not amenable to intervention failed intervention what do you do with them they have a high grade stenosis unstable plaques and i can't intervene what about after carotid artery stenosis how long do i give a combination should clinicians choose ticagrelor or clopidogrel with aspirin chance 2 is ongoing on that and this combination you know of antiplatelet with oral anticoagulant does the last part and the antiplatelet resistance is a something which is very interesting we shouldn't be really talking about it and i'm not going to genetically test everybody before i start them on you know antiplatelet so teaching points therefore aggressive medical management including aspirin clopidogrel 90 days and as i said let, let me quickly come to a little bit on this compass trial which is a low dose rivaroxaban with an antiplatelet and this is being given for stable atherosclerotic vascular disease and peripheral artery disease okay so this is there and uh, the results do show that when you have a combination the relative risk reduction is much much better with very little hemorrhagic component so this is uh, an ongoing trial and the end date is december 2022 therefore it seems that there are these little cohorts of patients wherein you may have to be more aggressive and start them on these combos of even a single antiplatelet and anticoagulant even when they don't have an af there so it all depends upon the individual what kind of a subtype whether they have more than one subtype out there how significant is a uh, say a large artery whether it's extra or intracranial and also whether the individual has other comorbidities you know what about a renal disease what about a chronic liver disease and how do they some people bleed on 50 mg of aspirin what do you do with them so you need to individualize and decide on that but th this is the uh, guidelines which i've already said so duat definitely are there 21 days for minor strokes 90 days so far for icad and there's an ongoing now trial dr rohit is doing with icmr may be giving for much longer period and look at that little uh, you know role for i think at this point for combos of antiplatelet and anticoagulant but it's going to be there and in those patients with af you can't anticoagulant give duat much longer period even lifelong thank you yeah thank you dr padma for uh, you know, nicely you know uh, giving an overview of uh, double antiplatelets and stroke prevention 
Uh, there is one question. So we have time for probably two questions. Uh, this is one question uh, from Dr. Vikram Uded. Uh, how long to give dual antiplatelets for non-ICAD patients? Uh, it's uh, three weeks or more than that. Uh, so the, the non-ICAD patients, again, for a mini stroke or in the stroke-prone state for 21 days, but uh, I'm sure you haven't asked only for that because there are a lot of caveats in this part of it because especially when you're looking at two subtypes, there you, you have a problem. Uh, and I think as an, an, in definitive ICAD, of course, you uh, guidelines says 90 days, but a lot of us are giving for much longer period and there's a trial now on board for that. However, if there's nothing, they're very clean mini strokes and non-ICAD, just, you know, it's like, say it's a small vessel disease, it's non cardiombolic then it's going to be three weeks. And that's what I think I would, but people are, we are giving even for a period of 21 to 30 days, the meta-analysis published by Dr. Prasad, in fact, says 10 to, in, in fact, he says only 10 days, the maximum benefit is 10 days, but uh, I, I, I do give it for at least uh, three weeks, if not a month. Thank you. Uh, there's a question, yes, uh, Dr. Ashok Kupal. Uh, uh, case of recurrent TA and stroke in patients who are already uh, so the, uh, basically a patient with a recurrent TA and stroke already on double antiplatelet uh, what to decide or what combo alternative combo to decide so when the patient has a recurrence while on an antiplatelet regime the first thing I would look at is a compliance and also the what's happening to the other risk factors he continues to smoke like a chimney then he will continue to have, uh, you know, a problem there. So compliance with treatment, uh, am I missing out other vascular risk factors? Have I missed the subtype? No point, you know, when there is an AF and I'm just treating him with antiplatelets. If I've done all this and I strongly suspect a resistance, then I have to look at that. And only then will I be able to shift my, you know, the whatever regime that I'm looking at into. Most often than not, it is these things. It would be a subtype that I missed out the compliance and also the control of the vascular risk factors and the last would be the resistance of a particular regime. Yeah, thank you. Question, Dr. Padma, uh, Dr. Jairaj. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so we have been using this uh, as usual very nice lecture, uh, Dr. Padma. Uh, so we have been using it uh, for quite some time now on the dual antiplatelets. So I would like to know your personal experience of using them in terms of causing, uh, you know, the increased uh, uh, prevalence or increased incidence of bleeds. Uh, not only the intracerebral bleeds, but GI bleeds uh, or bleeds in other uh, parts of the body. So that is one. And secondly, if such a patient on dual antiplatelet uh, does suffer a stroke, ischemic stroke, and comes within the window period, so what will be your strategy for, you know, thrombolysis for that patient? So I'll take the second question first. So when somebody is on a duac, so duac is generally taken in the night. So either he's taken at nine o'clock and he's come with a stroke to me at ten o'clock in the in the you know after an hour, or he's taken uh, uh, you know the antiplatelet and has come as a wake up stroke to me the next morning. Doesn't matter. I thrombolyze them. Again, the same vessel imaging. It could be just that I would give him IVT or he can go for EVT. To me, no problem. They could be a little up in the bleed risk and even the guidelines to say that you can go and thrombolize. That's one. The first question, that's an absolutely wonderful question you asked, Devishish, because from actually the experience, and I would like to ask even Jairaj his experience on this, that we've been given this duat. Now, between in the duat, I rarely give aspirin and dipyramol for the very simple reason you to step it up and these are headaches and I'm not very happy with this aspirin dipodomol at all. That's just for some reason. So aspirin clopidogrel remains the mainstay of, you know, an, uh, uh, the duat versus aspirin dipodomol. We do give aspirin dipodomol too, but less often. In this duat, I have given this for years on end in certain subtypes and have not really encountered major bleeds as has been, uh, you know, documented in the match trial. Or that the patients would become, you know, severely uh, uh, upset about it because of other systemic issues. So maybe we are different or maybe our incidence of ICAD is also big so that it is sort of just compensating that part of it, even though it doesn't come to that kind of a significance. I do not know. And as a population which is between far, you know, the Far East as well as from the West, 
as you know dr call says we are a unique set of atherosclerotic disease in fact he called it the indian atherosclerotic uh, you know type way back in almost 15 years back he described atherosclerosis as a fair amount of combination of both extra and intracranial in, in the indian population so i do not know about why it is so but i have given the uh, duat in certain populations for a longer period of time without encountering too much of a trouble but i don't consciously do that and i try and give it for a shorter duration of time when the indication is very clearly so okay thank you, thank you. uh one last question uh, we have just 2 minutes uh, i think dr swatnal jain now do you want to ask dr reddy is also asked a question and uh, and one more per question came from dr uh, shubham saniya so both of them yeah, are yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, Rohit, one second. I think Vikram has asked a very important question. In fact, uh, for want of time, I didn't touch that. He's asked about silastazole in uh, in uh, patients with ICAT. In fact, yes, Vikram, there are a lot of you know. The, actually, they start off as a Korean trials. There are big Korean trials which actually looked into the angiographic uh, substrate as a biomarker for an outcome even. in icat patients using silastazole alone and in combination with aspirin and also in combination with clopidogrel and all these trials have said that angiographic progression of icat was far less in combination of aspirin and silastazole so i think this combination has definite future and it is will come and also in icat there are these trials yes you you are very right i uh, i didn't talk about that uh, rohit you were saying something Sorry. I said, uh, Doctor Reddy and Shubham are live, so they can ask the question directly. I ask them to unmute as well. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, fam- fabulous lecture as always. Ma'am, just a quick one about the doses of aspirin that you would usually recommend in the situation. So, are you going to start with a you know when you're using dual therapy, you want to go with seventy-five milligrams, or would you like to start with one fifty and after a month or so, drip it down to seventy-five? What do how do you usually do things? I start with one fifty and then I dip it down to seventy five. All right, uh, yes, in about a month. Right. Is it about yeah, a month? Yeah, yeah. Actually, right. like you know, it, it, in fact, if I'm only given for twenty one days, then I give one fifty for twenty one days, or right. even up till twenty eight days. But if I have to go on for the for ninety days, then I dip it down to seventy five. Good. It is. I I I don't have real evidence to say that it is actually basically I'm comforting myself that I probably, but yes. but since 75 versus 150 at least the literature doesn't really de- uh, sort of uh, say that they are any less efficacious in terms of efficacy for aspirin as a monotherapy or by itself so and all the guidelines do start saying 75 to 325 so that's okay that do, can i ask last question last question small question padma <laughs> dr upal please yeah dr padma congratulations for excellent talk the my only question is that in your vast experience which double antiplatelet combination will be having very less bleeding complication As- aspirin and silastazole sir to me Surely. aspirin silastazole is the is the way forward i don't think aspirin ticagrelol has uh, is going to come in i mean thales study is is uh, positive we were part of thales study too but it is it is extremely very narrow cohort of patients where you can give and i'm scared of ticagrelol i've seen even coronary patients on this brillanta having issue so i think the i'm not talking of efficacy least hemorrhagic risk would be combo would be aspirin and silastazole but will you keep it uh, as the first uh, uh, your choice or the last choice in case of uh, uh, resistance by the antiplatelets no i uh, if i need it for a shorter period i'll take the very efficacious one like aspirin i will stick to aspirin clopidogrel at this point of time but when i need it to have for a longer period like say i can and i want to give it for a year then i'll take aspirin silastazole i don't have thank evidence you. yet but i think i'm going to come to that thank you thank you thank you dr padma uh, we will wind up and uh, 